like God presented himself to me, you know, came down from heaven with an image and said, like, Ethan, I am here. I'm pretty sure I believe in God at that point. I was curious, what what do you think of like Allah's influence on the world right now? And especially when it comes to kind of like the miracles that you would see in the Quran or that you uh, hear about that like Moses performs, for example, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, those seem very kind of out there when you look at like the world around, or at least for me, it looks, they seem uh, like you don't see that type of miracle around even claim to be happening today are you muslim yourself you're not muslim you got a question or is there a specific yeah yeah no i'm not i'm not muslim uh a friend pointed me out to the stream i thought it was really interesting uh i i guess i have a large backlog to go through but i'm really interested in just going through all of your content and learning about it uh okay. i'm atheist uh okay. but i really like exploring uh religion just kind of understanding more both from mm-hmm. like kind of just a general like cultural perspective and also really you know i <laughs> if if there is a god i want to know okay so let me ask you a few questions first when you say you're an atheist mm-hmm. are you the type of atheist who would say there is no god or are you or you mean you don't know if there is a god or there isn't a god that's the first thing i want to say and then the yeah, second yeah. thing on top of that is do you say i'm an atheist but i do believe in a higher power there's something out there that maybe created the universe or brought the universe mm-hmm. into existence Or do you say, no, there's nothing at all? Gotcha. Yeah. So I definitely wouldn't put myself as deist. I definitely would say I'm atheist agnostic. So I wouldn't say with certainty there isn't any God. But uh, I'm on the side of uh, I I don't see enough evidence to really claim it. You don't believe in a higher power? No, I don't. Okay. Now I want to say there's no such thing as atheist agnostic, right? It's either you're agnostic or atheist. It's either you would, you would be someone who would say, for example, this is just my position. You know, might disagree with me. But my position is this. It's either you'd say, I do not know if there is a God or there isn't a God. Therefore, I'm not making a claim. Or you would say, I believe there is no God. Or I believe all of these religions are false. Or these are all positive claims. So it's either you'd be an agnostic. You'd say, I do not know, which is, I would say, the best that any atheist can do because no atheist can prove can, sorry, disprove the existence of God because mm-hmm. that's a positive claim. So any atheist in reality is an agnostic, but because they have, not you, but some, many of them would have like hatred towards religion, they would label mm-hmm. themselves to be atheist, which means I'm anti-theist. That's what they want to say in, in yeah, a way. Yeah. You get what I'm trying to say, right? So that's mm-hmm. why it's very important, I think, to kind of identify yourself with the right ter- terminology. I think agnostic would suit more your position that, that you have. But it's, I understand where you're coming from. And that's the important thing, what you believe and what you don't believe. Okay. So when you say that you want evidence for the existence of God, what is your Sorry, criteria you, for what? what, what is you, your, yeah, you, you said there is no evidence. Thing. You said there is no evidence for the existence of God. What is the criteria mm-hmm. for you to establish that there is a God or there isn't a God? And right. that's the first I, thing. I, I, okay, I'll let you answer this first. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to clarify. I don't think the correct wording is to say there's no evidence for the existence of God. I think the correct wording for me would be there isn't sufficient evidence. So in, you know, like if there's like a trial or a court case, right, and you're trying to prove that uh, someone robbed your house, there might, if they didn't rob your house, you might still have evidence to prove that they robbed your house and present it, right? And so in the same way, like, and I'm not, th- this isn't like an assertion of how good the proof is or isn't the proof, uh, is it? But like, in, in a general sense, I don't want to say there isn't evidence. Like, people have brought up points to me before, right? And I consider that evidence. It's just, I don't think there's enough evidence. Does that no, no, but that's, what, but that's what, but my question is that, particularly, mm-hmm. right? My question is, what is the convincing evidence from your criteria and your standard? Because you as Ethan, you're different from anyone else, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Might meet, my, I might meet David on the street, and then he is convinced with a basic re- reasonable argument that has premises are correct and conclusion necessary follows, right? And then I might, I might meet someone else who say, no, nothing will convince me even if the sky, the sky opens, which a lot of atheists do say, right? So is yeah. the, question, the question is this, what would convince you personally? Yeah, so um, I will say that it's probably going to be different based on, you know, what type of God or to what extent you're trying to prove God. So that my criteria for evidence for like a personal God that, uh, you know, uh, has a relationship with me, for example, Uh, compared to like the deist interpretation of God where they're like, you know, it just created the universe or like, I I don't know, there's a bunch of different cultures out there with different ideas of God. I I think each one would require, uh, 
different evidence. And I'm also going to be honest in saying that I don't know exactly where the line would be. It's it's hard for me to uh, picture the you know evidence in my head without uh, actually hearing it. And if I actually heard evidence that would prove God to me, then I would I wouldn't be an atheist. Or if you want to say agnostic, I wouldn't be agnostic. So, um, but I guess going to the extreme side, and I think there's things that are uh, would require less evidence, right? But just to give you something, because I don't want you to think that I'm just trying to like give you not answers. Like if uh, like God presented himself to me, like, you know, came down from heaven with an image, right? And said like, Ethan, I am here, right? Uh, I'd be, I'm pretty sure I'd believe in God at that point. I, but would that, that be seems, God? That seems like a good. But would that be God? If it's a limited image of something, would that be God? If Sorry, it goes it, into if it goes into the, un- the universe and limits itself and becomes something limited within the universe that has a specific limited physical image, would that be mm-hmm. God? It it would be God presenting Himself to me. So in the same way, it wouldn't be God if. Uh, the stars realigned and said, Ethan, I am here, right? I wouldn't say that's God, but I'd be like, only a God could do that, right? If no, I, no, but if I, I don't think, that. yeah, I don't think you're getting the point I'm making. A point okay. I'm making is of the definition of God. Sure, okay. All right? God is an all powerful, all knowing entity, etc. From our definition as well, it does not resen- God does not resemble his creation. So if mm. something were to appear that looks like the creation, okay, that is limited by the creation, then from our definition and many other religious people's definition, that's not God. So when you, you in essence, you're saying God become not God in order for me to believe that you're God, you know? Okay. You get what yeah, I'm trying, yeah. to, say, trying to say, right? Uh, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But uh, what I'm trying to point out, and that's why I said the stars, if, if God can manipulate his creation, he could do it in such a way that I would believe in him. And one version would be, and I, 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 I'm okay, sure okay. you would, yeah, yeah, but, you, but here, you, here, that, that, that is not what we're asking for. I'm asking you for okay. your, what you're saying, God can force me to believe. No one disagrees with that, but that defeats the purpose of our existence here. We believe this life is a test. Therefore, there has to be, belief is a choice that you make. And that's what religious people believe in general. Uh, religious people will not tell, if God wanted to put everyone in paradise, he would. If he wanted to make everyone a believer, he would. So it's mm-hmm. irrelevant to say that if God wanted me to be, believe, I would believe. Of course, no one disagrees with that point. But it, it defeats the purpose of creation. It defeats, the, it defeats the purpose of giving you will to choose. <laughs> Do you understand? So you cannot yeah. then say that uh, if God wanted me to be a believer, I'd be a believer. Look, I know you, you also would notice this, that you've not provided an answer for what is sufficient reasoning for you to believe in God. And why am I stating, uh, you said deist or not, any type of higher power, deist or, or theist, it does not matter. Mm. What would be a convincing evidence for that? You said if something were to come and then display its image and this and that, and then I explained to you that then, in most people's definition of God, that wouldn't be God. So it wouldn't be convincing. But still, the point, why am I sticking on this point? Is because if you do not know two things, what God is, and what is your sufficient evidence to believe in God, how can then we move forward with a conversation proving God's existence? Because we do not know what God is and what is proof. You understand what I'm saying? The reason I'm sticking on that, yeah, the reason I'm I'm kind of sticking on that is because what this is what most atheists do, in my experience. They say, there's no evidence for God. I say, okay. (laughs) So then I start providing evidence for God. But that's not evidence for me. That, 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 that's not enough. Okay, but you didn't give me the evidence. Oh, sorry, you didn't give me the criteria of what is convincing evidence for you. And then we can move forward from there, trying to see whether your criteria first is rational, because your criteria has to be rational. Like the example you gave me, I was just demonstrating why it's not rational to ask for what you asked, because that's not God, what, whatever you will see. So your criteria has to be rational. And then when we both agree that your criteria is rational, then I can proceed to provide you evidence to what you're looking for. Okay. But I want to ask a more of a deep question, Ethan. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the theist is the one who has to prove there is a God? Or is the belief in God something innate within every human being to begin with? Is the... Well, first of all, I I don't know if that's exactly an either or. But uh, to answer the second part first... I, I would say no. And the the reason I would say that is, I, I mean, you kind of just provided an example that uh, there's different definitions of God out there. And uh, so even if you wanted to say like, oh, you know, look at uh, Christians, they have uh, you, they have a God in their heart that they innately believe or uh, like uh, look at a lot of Eastern cultures, they they have some type of God in their heart which like, I, I'm not 100% sure about. I don't, I, did, I haven't read like, 
like uh what's the right word any like socio sociological studies on uh like isolated tribes and what they exactly believe but uh it does seem like uh they're you, you know especially if we're going by your definition of god which by the way i'd love to hear like a very uh a clear definition that way i can work with it and uh make sure we're you know talking on the same no same problem page. okay okay no problem i'll I'll do that but first i want to address mm -hmm. what you said all of those different religions agree on the basic idea of a god all-powerful all-knowing creator of the universe independent self-sufficient eternal all of these attributes they agree upon and the, these are the attributes that i'm referring to when i say they're innate within a human being i'm not referring to the uh, to the idea that jesus is a god or a trinity or mm -hmm. Or all of this nonsense. I'm not referring to that, right? Or yeah, that yeah. Prophet Muhammad is a prophet. I'm not saying none of this is innate within a human being. But I'm saying that the main attribute of the higher power that brings the universe into existence, is it an innate part of human's existence? According to the studies that was, that was done, it is. And there are multiple studies uh, done on this idea, like by Justin Barrett in Oxford University and by uh, another woman scientist as well, that she done specifically on Japanese children because her colleague was Japanese and he said to her that our that we, didn't we don't have a concept of God, so our children don't believe in God. And then you've got the idea that every civilization believed in a higher power. There's no civilization that existed in human history that did not have an idea of a higher power. Atheism on a, on a mass scale is a new idea. It's not, it's not something that was a part of humans' existence. It is something that was introduced today by a group of pseudo-intellectuals that they're trying to say that science opposes God. Therefore, now, because we advance in science, we no longer believe in God. But the, we disagree with the premise that the two of them contradict one another right so what i would say to you is that the belief in god is innate based on our scientific studies these studies conclude and the, the one that was, that was done by justin barrett was done uh millions of dollars were spent on the study 50 over 50 academics was involved and it took a period of three years on children it was not a small scale study so what science or let's say what our discoveries show is that it's an innate thing within, within every human being as there are other innate things within human beings, like for example, the belief in causality. It's an innate thing within human beings. Like if you touch a baby, he looks for the cause. He does not assume that there is no cause. If you bring, and they did studies on that. If you bring a table, you put objects on top of the table. If you remove the table and you hold the objects without falling, the baby is, is, is shocked, right? Because the baby is expecting things to fall. So that's an innate thing that is also within human being. So what I would say is no believer has to justify the existence of God because it's a part of a human nature. The person who says that there isn't a God, the person who says I oppose human nature is the one who has to give us reasons why he's opposing human nature. That's what I would say. So I, I don't think any theist should be uh, proving anything to anyone because there is an, it is like similar to you asking me proving causality. No atheist does ask that because they know that's an innate thing that everyone agrees upon. That it's a common sense thing. That there is, a, that there is a, a cause for effects, right? Yeah. So yeah, uh least, yeah go ahead. Uh, I, 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 I'd love to read these studies. I'll a hundred percent. I'll take your word for it. Uh, no, I, I will do uh, sorry to interrupt you, Ethan. What I will do yeah. is when I upload this conversation, all of the studies will appear on the screen, you know, so awesome. don't worry. <laughs> so you yeah. can then check them that time, but go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah and I'll, uh, I'll definitely make sure to look through them. Um, and I definitely believe you in, uh, a, a lot of the senses just face value. I'd want to take a look at the study specifically to once again, ensure that they're, criteria for God or spirituality or re religion that they're looking for inherently in children is mm -hmm. uh, kind of the similar to the one you said. I think you mentioned like, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, like all powerful, like yes, eternal, yes, the yes. source of yes. uh, uh, something creation. above, something that is uh, invisible, something as powerful, mm -hmm. that created the world, these basic attributes, basically. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you also asked me to give you a definition of God. I don't know if you still want me to do that. I Oh, yeah, I'd love to. Please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, the Quran's definition of God is very simple. If you mm -hmm. open chapter 112 of the Quran, it says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say Allah is uniquely one. Okay? Allah is uniquely one. Independent. Self-sufficient. Everything depends on him. Relies on, on Allah. Allah relies on nothing or no one. Uh, neither begets nor is born. Doesn't have children. Doesn't have parents. Doesn't have grandparents. And this idea of family. And there is nothing like onto him. So anything that we perceive in human's existence does not resemble the creator. It's not like the creator. So these are, this is a basic definition. These four verses that I told you, very precise, concise verses are the Quranic description of Allah. Our other verses, but I think this is more than, than enough to 
give a, a basic understanding of what lies. That's okay. Uh, I really like that. Thank you. I'm curious. Um, this isn't like a, a gotcha or anything. I'm just curious about the concept behind it. So you would say that like men aren't created in the image of God. I hear that a lot from Christians. I don't know if I've heard that from Muslims, but well, there, there is a similar narration that 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 says that Adam was created on the image of Allah. Mm -hmm. But then our understanding of it is not like the Christian understanding of God, a person who's created the image of God. So we don't say that this therefore means that Allah looks like the creation. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, you would say, yeah. Go ahead, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I'm just like, looks like versus like in the image and just uh, specifically like, so Allah... Uh, Allah's creation reflects him in some way or specifically yeah there are there are multiple in interpretations way? there are multiple interpretations mm -hmm. given by the scholars some of them would say for example that, that we do have attributes that are given by Allah that Allah possesses like the attribute of mercy or love or knowledge or this these attributes we have is because Allah has given us those attributes you understand so mm -hmm. in in that idea he has max, maximally perfect attributes so he has maximally perfect knowledge but we have a limited level of knowledge right but it's the same attribute that is given to us by Allah other scholars would say just because something is on the image of image of something else does not mean that it's like it and they give an example of the prophet peace be upon him prophet Muhammad him. he said for example that the first group that will enter paradise they will be on the image of a full moon they are on the image of, of the moon in the night when it's like full moon right so no scholar would say that the believers will turn into a moon right but this is a, a likening in the image of an mm. image. Just because an image is resembling another image does not mean that now they look the same. You get what I'm trying to say? So this mm. is our explanation of this of this idea. While Christians would say, no, in the image of God means actually God is a man. Like they believe that Jesus Christ is a man. We don't believe that. Mm. All right, thank you. That was, that was really informative. And yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, especially with what I've read and what I've heard with Muslims. So I, I'm glad I got to clarify that. No problem. Okay, from, let me ask this question then. Mm. Isn't this, this concept of God, this, con this idea of the creator, mm. do you have any issues with it from a rational perspective? Um, did you mention uh, all good? Because I would put problem of evil as, a, uh, as an issue. Um, well, and I, I would also... What you mean by all good? Okay, uh, well then, if... Well, first of all, if, I if guess... If you mean by all good... You... Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me what yeah, you mean. I, I'm just curious, like, yeah, I, for for the sake of me saying whether it's rational or not, uh, what's what's your definition of uh, like all good or what is God uh, in relations to uh, no, God, God, good God and justice? No, uh, from our perspective, mm -hmm. uh, Allah is the one who determines moral moral things, mm -hmm. meaning that whatever God commands is good, whatever God commands to do is good, and whatever God says not to do is bad. Okay. Right. Um, and so God's actions are good necessarily because God is. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that makes sense. He's he's the definition and the like the creation source of morality and ethics. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Uh, and uh, would you say then though his the, what he created is all good or did he he's no. the source <laughs> of okay so uh, yeah that, would, yeah. There is evil and there is good in the world, right? And yeah, say okay. that, yeah. Both of them are created. Both of them exist in, in in creation, and that is Allah allowing the people the choice to choose between doing good or bad. As I said, coming back to the idea of, of choice and the purpose behind us being in this life, if we can only do good, it cannot be a test, cannot be a reward and punishment based on your actions because you can mm -hmm. only do good. So the fact that you have will, it necessitates that you will choose from good and evil, which necessitates the existence of evil. Right. And uh, yeah, I, you brought this up before. Uh, there was a point I wanted to make um, about like the idea of free will uh, and the idea of belief and like how much can Allah really... I never said free will, by the way, once, I think. <laughs> I oh, said sorry. Will. Uh, <laughs> it's will. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm, I'm actually curious. Usually people are fine with that being interchangeable. What's, uh, what, what's the difference in your mind? Because... Our will is always bound to Allah's will. So it's not free. From an Islamic perspective, for example, I cannot do something against Allah's, God's will. That means God is not all powerful by definition. So to say your will is free, is something is incorrect because you're not an independent all powerful being. Your will is limited to whether Allah is okay with that choice you're making or not, right? So our will is always bound to Allah's will. 
from an Islamic perspective. So it's not free, but Allah has given us the choice to choose that which deals with our salvation. Okay? That's why I don't use the term free. I'm very okay. particular of not using the term free for that reason. Because it's not okay. really free. But we choose... When I say it's not free, that does not mean that we are forced to choose what we choose. Right? Okay, uh, so, but it's still uh, entirely our choice, not Allah's choice within the parameters that he's given us then, would you say? We don't I'm, I'm separate, no, we don't separate. We say it's our choice and it's Allah's will as well, that we're choosing that thing. Okay, so it's, but let's say that... Uh, it's something if, called, I mean, com if, you, if you look into like... Uh, something that a lot of people refer to as compatibilism. You've got libertarianism, which is completely free from God. God has no control over you. He's God for, for somehow, all powerful, but he cannot control you. I, I've got... had a lot of arguments with Christians about that concept. Yeah, so, it's yeah, ridiculous. Have... But because yeah. Christians are different camps as well. So you've got the Calvinists. You've got, yeah. you've got different camps when it comes to the, the idea of free will. It's not one camp, right? Yeah. You've got three camps there as well. But the point is, so those libertarian ones are completely going against the scripture, completely mm -hmm. nonsensical point of view. Similarly, the other ones are also going the, uh, against the scripture and would not have a rational justification to say that everything is forced. If everything is forced, then what's the point of hellfire and paradise and all of that? Mm -hmm. How can God punish you for... We've got a middle ground as Muslims. We've got a middle ground. Allah says in the Quran, لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ For whoever wills among you to be steadfast, to be good. And then Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ and you do not well except that Allah Azza wa wills. So your will will always be under Allah's will. You cannot go against the, the, the will of Allah. But Allah affirms for you that you choose for whoever wills of you to choose to be steadfast. So you are choosing to be steadfast, but that choice of yours does not go against God's uh, choices as well. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I it's think a compatible I do, but it's... It, it also it also feels conflicting to me. I, I I'd love if you have resources about this as well. I'd love to no take no a look it, at it, them. it does but, and it will always do because reality is the idea of free will has been look since you know thousands hundreds of thousands of years this idea has been discussed right so, yeah, so I'm yeah. not gonna find the solution for you today you know <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. So I'm, I'm just telling you our position our position is a compatibilist sure. position it might appear to certain individuals to be contradictory but it is not contradictory. Mm -hmm. Because you can choose, and a lot of people have given examples for that. You can choose something, and at the same time, it is God's will, and that does not take away from you making that choice, right? Mm. This is our position. And I would say this is not an important issue to be thinking about. What is important to be thinking about is whether there is a creator and that religion is true or not. Because once, if we establish there is a creator, and we establish that religion is, is true, that means by necessity, it is irrelevant whatever the scripture says is true. If the scripture says I'm forced, then I'm forced. If the scripture mm, says yeah. I'm, I, I'm not forced, then I'm not forced. You understand what I'm saying? So I would say it's not a fundamental question to ask on a, when it comes to this discovering religions and things like that. It's more of a, a curiosity of knowledge if you want to get into that kind of debate and discussion. It's a loophole that you're not going to find an answer for because it is an issue that no, they don't have an answer for. So we say as Muslims, Al-Qadaru, the concept of this predestination, Sirullahi fi khalqih, is a secret of Allah amongst his creation. We believe that just because as we are limited in our physical attributes, seeing and hearing and smelling and all of that, we're also limited on, on our intellectual endeavors. We cannot explain and know everything. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we would be the creator. But what is important to establish and prove, it is the foundation of the religion, the proof, of the, the idea of God and that religion being true. This is why it's important for you to be able to establish. Yeah, um, and just kind of going off of that, I, uh, I, I would love to see uh, just, I, I, I don't have too many resources for evidence for, uh, you know, the uh, historicity of Muhammad and uh, just kind of the history behind uh, Islam in general. I, I, I'd love if do you, if you have just general pointers or maybe I should just finish watching, you know, the back uh, on your no, channel. No, 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 absolutely. But, there is yeah. no there is no issues. I, look, I have a, I have a nice uh, podcast you might want to to check out. It was on on Rattlesnake TV. Uh, it was like a two-hour podcast in which I went through also the life of Prophet Muhammad, basic idea of what Islam is, and uh, other topics as well. So maybe you want to, uh, you would want to check that out. But basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, the idea is that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was uh, an Arab, a Bedouin Arab. He could not read mm -hmm. or write, and he was amongst his people for forty years before he received revelation from God. His people knew him as the trustworthy, the honest. This was the titles that the, his people gave him because he was a community-based like life. So everyone knows everyone in the community. So they know that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the, the, uh, the honest, 
the trustworthy because they used to entrust their goods with him and they used to come back and everything is okay. They never knew him to lie. Knew him to lie. So at the age of 40, and they used to worship idols. Prophet Muhammad والسلام, what he used to do is he did not believe that well, that which you make with your own hand is God. So it does not make any sense to say, I made this with my own hand and this is God. You know, <laughs> you just literally made it with your own hand. Then Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he used to go to a cave called the cave of Hira and he used to uh, try to worship God. Reflect upon the creation of God and try to worship God. And he had the first encounter with Angel Gabriel in which the first revelation of the Quran, the first few verses of the Quran was revealed. Then he went back to, to his wife and then he was shocked. He was terrified because he encountered something that was extraterrestrial, you can say. Uh, his wife, she insured him and she told him, you, or you're good. So God will never do anything bad to you because you're good to the people. You're honest. You do good things. You give charity, etc. And then Prophet Muhammad had other encounters and he had revelation. And then this, this idea continued for 23 years. The Quran was revealed for 23 years. Sometimes when revelation came, his wife was there. His companions were there. They saw the effects of revelation on him. Like his wife, for example, she used to say that in the cold day, you know, the cold day in the desert is like complete insane because you got no, but nothing to protect you from the cold. She said he used to sweat in the coldest day. From the revelation coming on him. You understand? Mm -hmm. Something you cannot basically replicate. To see a, a human cannot replicate the idea of sweating in the coldest winter. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But this used to happen because of revelation. Another companion, his, le his leg was uh, uh, on the leg of the other companion. When revelation came, he said, I felt like my, my uh, leg was going to uh, be broken from the weight of revelation coming down. So these are certain incidents that happened while uh, revelation was coming down upon Prophet Muhammad. His mission was to call people to worship God alone. Worship one creator, not associate any partners with him. There's only one deity worthy of worship, the deity that I gave you the description of, and to stop worshiping idols and things that you make with your own hand. And he was persecuted for 13 years because he was calling people to worship God alone. And those people who are Bedouin Arabs that, uh, that only believe in the religion of their forefathers and believe that you are di disgracing us by saying, leave the religion of your forefathers. It was a cultural thing for them. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he struggled for 13 years. Then he had to leave Mecca to go to Medina. And then they were also uh, trying to attack him until he took back Mecca from those Bedouin Arabs and, and they came back to their lands. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he continued to preach or tell people about God alone until uh, he died. And then his companions are doing the same. Tell people about the truth because he came with the Quran. The Quran is the eternal message until the end of time. It's for you and for me and for everyone. Not for the Arabs, not for a specific group. It is for all the creation. And it will remain until the day of judgment. Okay? So it's uh, Quran is the guidance for how to live your life, to know right from wrong, to know what will happen in the afterlife, to know the attributes of God, all of these things, to know some of the history of the past and the life of the prophets. All of that is within the Quran. So uh, do you have a Quran? Uh, no, I did actually listen to it. Uh... Okay. I, I, I obviously I'm yeah through through audiobook on long yes. drives. It was uh it was really uh it it was very insightful. Parts mm -hmm. of it were as uh almost hypnotic. It was a really kind of interesting experience, right? There's uh there's kind of something beautiful in the repetition, and I'm sure it's a lot better in its native language rather than obviously I I listen to it in English, so no, I'm no, sure absolutely. there's parts that I'm missing, but it will touch uh, your soul. Is the, is the words of God, literally the words of God, right? So it, it will have an impact on your soul, whether you like it or not, even it will, it will impact your soul when you're listening to it. Mm. So um, I, I would recommend you, you do read the Quran. Because as I said, look, the idea of God, I don't think, I think it's an innate thing to know that the God exists. That's why I don't, uh, for me, it's like trying to prove to you that the sun is over there next to you. you know? mm. <laughs> There's no, no, no need for me to do that. I'd say the creation is enough to know that there is a creator. Looking at the magnificence of the creation, looking at oneself and everything around you is enough to know that there is a creator. And then the revelation of God speaks for itself. If you read it, you will innately know for a fact that this has to be from God. Do you have any, any questions for me? Uh, yeah, this is slightly off topic now, but when you're describing the life of Muhammad, and you got to understand, I'm always coming from like the people I generally talk don't to. Don't worry, or, don't uh, worry. Some you're denomination of Christians. Getting offended, don't worry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, but, uh, so it, it, is it your belief that Muhammad was a perfect person or has done no wrong? Maybe would be the best way to put it. No, we would say that prophets of God do not commit major sins. Mm -hmm. They do not commit things which are a bad thing when it comes to character, like lying, fornicating, committing adult, all of these things that which will be a, 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 an attack on a person's character. Prophets do not do these type of things. And they could commit, they could do things not in the best way possible. And then mm. God would correct them. So what we may, may refer to as minor sins. And then the creator would correct them straight away. So unlike the creation, Allah will correct them and they will seek repentance straight away. And they will mm. be forgiven straight away. Why? Because 
as prophets of God, if they do something that is not optimal, they are examples for mankind, it has to be corrected instantly mm. in order for us not to follow that thing. So if it, it does that, if that does happen with any of the prophets, Allah will correct that person instantly. Mm. There's an so, example in the Quran, an incident with Prophet Muhammad salam, there was a person who was blind, it's called Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, and he came to Prophet Muhammad salam. he wanted him to give him some information to teach him. Prophet Muhammad salam, he was speaking with the heads of Quraysh, you know, the, the heads of the Bedouin Arabs. So he was concerned about them because if they believe, all of the people will believe. That's how the people used to be in the time. If the tribe leader mm -hmm. believes, most of the tribe believes. So Prophet Muhammad was focusing on them. And they, that man, the blind man, came to the Prophet. And then the Prophet, he frowned in his face. But he was blind. He didn't see him frowning anyways. You know what I'm trying to say? He didn't say anything bad to him. He didn't curse him. He just frowned because he was wanted something which is good which is to focus on the leaders uh, to believe because everyone will believe and the message will spread then Allah Azza in the Quran told him why did you frown maybe mm. that that person would have uh, gotten purification for you from you so then there was a chapter in the Quran in which in the, all the beginning of the chapter talks about this incident right? that's an example that uh, something that happened in the life of Prophet Muhammad salam, right there are other examples for other uh, Prophets of God, like Adam alayhi salam eating from the from the tree. Uh, that seems like a pretty big one, right? No, that's not a big one because it's a big one for Christians, not for Muslims. Because in ah, Islam, okay. we don't have we don't have the original sin. Right. Okay. We, yeah, uh, we don't. Do you, do you get the point? For Christians, that's mm -hmm. all the basis of the religion. For us, it's something that happened, and straight away he was forgiven, and that's it. I have nothing to do with it. No one has nothing to do with it, right? But in Christianity, that's the basis of their creed. But that's an example because Allah says in the Quran, Adam And Adam disobeyed his Lord when he ate from the tree. Him and Hawa, both of them. So these are examples and it, uh, of these type of things that you might say that were not optimal from the prophets and messengers. But still, they were the best of the creation. We believe they were the best of the creations. There was no one in the creation who could do better than them. But the ultimate perfection in all actions and attributes is to Allah. It's not to the creation. So we give them their status, but we do not overpraise them and we do not underpraise them in the same time. Make sense? Yeah, that's yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, this is a bit nitty gritty, right? And maybe you don't have an answer or maybe you're going to say this is getting too pedantic, but just okay. I'm curious. Would you would you say that because you're saying like non optimal things, right? Uh, that uh, so I give an example. You, yeah. If if I could really quickly ask though, like, mm -hmm. would you say that uh, like Muhammad has done negative things then, or are they all things that just could have been improved on? If that if you are, again what I mentioned things that are against that can be critique in his character things that are uh, major sins all of these tough things no we don't believe the prophets and messengers do these things mm. and whatever something that as i said was not optimal that happened it was corrected straight away yeah. you'll find the trace of it being corrected for whatever example you have in mind do you have something in mind that you want to ask about or you just maybe like no, generally like okay no it's uh, I, some I'm people usually have, have something in their mind that is particularly they mean but otherwise as i said no but the examples yeah. i give okay yeah um <laughs> Once again, I'm going back to the comparison a lot, but that's that feels like a lot easier to defend than like saying, you know, Jesus uh, being the son of God, being ultimately perfect in every way. Right. Yeah, so. it's uh, yeah, but it's not it's not. I would say, look, if the Islam taught that Prophet Muhammad was perfect in every way, I would defend it. But the reality is Islam doesn't teach that. So I do mm -hmm. not need to teach it. Well, you're saying it's not easy to defend this idea because the, the idea of Jesus, because God is perfect. When you give the absolute perfection to anything else, you are likening that thing to God. You're also calling mm -hmm. it God. So if you want to say that Jesus is perfect in every way, then you have to. There ha cannot be anything that is not even optimal from the optimal, because that's perfection now. Everything has to be optimal. Not just good, but it has to be optimal, right? That's what perfection mm -hmm. is. Perfection yeah. is not 80%, which is good. It is optimal, which is 100%. So you'd have to demonstrate that. Yeah. But perfection can mean different things. That's why I asked you, because perfection can mean that you, you are fulfilling the role the way that you were supposed to fulfill that role. So I can say this crew is perfect, is in the perfect place. It does not mean that it's optimal character. Do you go know what I'm trying to say? So perfect can yeah, be relative in, in certain terms as well. So we well, believe that Prophet Muhammad We would all perfect. be perfect in a sense. Yeah, right? we believe. Because... Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. believe that human beings are perfect from to do that which God created them to do. Yeah. We believe Prophet Muhammad was perfect to fulfill the role that he was supposed to, from that perspective, to fulfill the role that he was asked to do. But that does not mean that there was nothing that you can look at and say, okay, that was not optimal, per se, mm. because he was a human being. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, okay. I, I love getting into the nitty gritty with 
when it comes to like philosophical ideas, right? Okay. This okay. uh the problem of evil and creation of the universe, determinism, a lot mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff. But I think you're definitely right in saying that, you know, if the evidence is there historically, right? If uh it makes it if it's just uh, obviously clear that uh Muhammad was God and you can prove this from Muhammad was a God, prophet. Sorry, was, yeah, it's I'm okay. so sorry. It's yeah. It's all right. it's uh, okay. if yeah. <laughs> uh but if that Muhammad uh, performed miracles and that uh, God was influencing the world through him mm -hmm. and through mm -hmm. that time, then uh, yeah, I I 100% agree with you that I would I, I I would I would also chalk it up to you know like I, I don't know and absolutely who can know yeah especially when, um, when those issues especially when those issues sorry to interrupt you especially mm -hmm. when these issues are issues that have been there's no answer for it because they've been discussed for thousands of years. So mm. uh, it's not going to be one day one person bringing you answers for that, you know? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. You, you wanted to continue and say something else. Yeah, which is, uh, how do I put this? Well, first of all, I, uh, I definitely, I have to learn more. I, gotta, I have to read more about all of this. Um, I was curious, what, what do you think of like kind of uh, Allah's influence on the world right now? And especially when it comes to kind of like the miracles that you would see in the Quran or that you uh, hear about that like Moses performs, for example, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they, those seem very kind of out there when you look at like the world around, or at least for me, it looks, they seem uh, like you don't see that type of miracle around even claim to be happening today. Uh, so I, I'm curious, do you think that there's, uh, is this another uh, kind of, uh, what's, what's the right word? Like free will uh, issue where if, Allah presented uh, miracles in the same capacity he did before, there would be, we wouldn't really have a choice in believing him? Or do you think there are miracles to the same capacity that there's happening before? Or well, I, I'm just curious what you think about modern miracles versus... Yeah, I think, I think you said something very intelligent first, I would say. It's, it, is, it is the idea that if undoubtable evidence was, was established like through miracles, clear-cut miracles in front of people, they should not have a choice whether to believe or not to believe because now the matter is settled. I think it's a very intelligent thing for you to say because the Quran does mention that. The Quran mentions this idea that, that uh, if we were to present them aside, then they will be, they have no option except to incline to be, accept that miracle because now it's a clear cut evidence. So uh, now to answer what you're saying is we do believe in the miracles that happened in the past based again on the same principle is that the Quran is from God. So that I need to, if, if the Quran was not from God, I would not believe any of this history happened. Since I can establish the Quran is from God, I don't have no issues accepting that Musa alayhi salam, he preferred the miracle or Isa alayhi salam. Not all of the miracles are mentioned in the Bible because I'm saying the ones that are mentioned in the Quran, Quran right? Mm -hmm. Don't have any issues accepting these things. So it all comes down to whether I can establish whether the Quran is from God or not. So when I look at the Quran and I know, look, the Quran has news of the future that no one knew about that is happening today. That Prophet Muhammad spoke about. It has news of the past that we could not have known because we did not have access to knowledge of that civilization. We did not have the, the necessary language to read, like calligraphics, until we discovered the Rosetta Stone. And that's way after Prophet Muhammad in the 1800s. So all of these things, right? Talks about the past, talking about the future. The Quran itself, not, no one able to imitate it in the Arabic language. So, mm -hmm. and this is remaining until today. No Arab has been able to imitate the, 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 the Quran. And it's an objective challenge. It's an objective, objective uh, challenge because the criteria is there. Also, the idea of the life of Prophet Muhammad himself, looking at his life and how he could not have been lying. He could not have been, uh, could not have been deceived. He could not have been uh, insane. He could not have been any of these things. When you look and study his life from a psychological perspective. When you gather all of these evidences, and the Quran talks about the natural world, talks about the universe, talks about things that if, if you were bringing it from your own knowledge that time, it would be full of mistakes because you did not know the things that we noted. So when you look at that and you establish all of these type of, uh, types of evidences, you come to the necessary conclusion that this has to be from the creator. Therefore, this itself is a miracle because Prophet Muhammad could not have known this information, could not have done these things that we've said. So if this miracle is there, then I don't have an issue accepting another miracle that was done by a different prophet in the past. Makes sense. And uh, so and the people, sorry if you uh, explain this, but the people who did see uh, miracles, uh, mm -hmm. were they... Did they not have a choice in the matter then? Or what What would you say about the people, you know, that saw Muhammad perform miracles? 
not Prophet Muhammad uh, sure. in the past, yeah. yeah, in the other prophets and messengers, when mm -hmm. they performed, when they when they brought these type of miracles, and people disbelieve, Allah punished those nations. So the nation of Ad, the, the nation of Lot, the, the nation of, of Thamud, all of these nations of the previous messengers, Allah mentions mm -hmm. their stories in the Quran, is that they saw those, those signs, but they still disbelieve. And then Allah punished them for disbelieving. Look, if you see the signs and you disbelieve, then you're doomed. Because now it's not an issue of, oh, I don't know, you know, because mm -hmm. you literally saw it in front of your eyes happening. Now it's an issue of arrogance and uh, uh, intentionally disbelieving in the Creator. Therefore, mm -hmm. you deserve to be punished. So Allah punished many of those nations that they, they got those specific type of miracles happening for them and they still disbelieve. Uh, I, I guess I, I'm trying to understand why the, and maybe this is the wrong wording, why the like test for them was different then though, right? Because uh, they were, regardless of, I, I understand they were punished for not believing something that was extremely obvious in front of them. But uh, presumably that same uh, concept could happen to me, right? Uh, and what what would be the difference or the, uh, the, the difference in like fairness between them getting a uh, revelation or a miracle in front of them and having to, from there extremely obvious evidence. And then it's either you believe or you don't believe uh, compared to wh why would it be then wrong for uh, a lot to give that evidence now? Does, does that question? We're not that saying that? it's wrong. We are just saying we say that Allah Azzawajal does the things the way that fits his majesty. Right, the way that he knows because he's the most wise. If he decided to give a specific type of evidence to a specific type of people in a specific type of way, because every messenger had a different type of miracle, by the way. So it's not like all of them brought the same thing. All of them brought different things. So Allah, جل, based on his wisdom, to those specific people, he will give certain things. So today, Allah is not giving us that because Prophet Muhammad والسلام, is the last and final messenger. So mm -hmm. the one that performs that miracle is the messenger. And there's no messengers today coming. So there is no one performing those miracles to you today. But Allah says in the Quran that we will show them our signs within the horizon and within themselves until it's clear to them that is the truth. So in your heart, you will go to hell. You will be punished. But the difference is, is you punish in this life, you punish in the afterlife. <laughs> Either way, the person will be punished. You get the point. So if the miracle is done in a way which is undoubtable, observable in front of your own eyes, then the hastening of the of the punishment can happen sometimes by Allah Azza wa Jal, based on his will. That look, that person have seen the miracle undoubtedly in front of her own of his own eyes. Now researching and coming to the truth, Allah Azza wa Jal chooses to punish you in the afterlife. But still, even Allah can punish people in this life, but not necessarily those type of punishments of the people of the past where a whole nation is completely destroyed. But he punishes mm -hmm. you throughout your life by, get, by getting depression, losing your money, all of these type of different punishments. It can't apply to you still. Mm -hmm. So, it, so it's, everything is based on Allah's will there because Allah's will operates uh, in accordance to Allah's wisdom and he will show the signs to the people based on his will and wisdom. I, I, so I, I think this is kind of going back to what you said before where if you know the Quran is correct, it's correct. Right. But mm. um, I'm still trying to can you think of a reason beyond that? It's stated that there was like kind of a transition, like why, uh, for example, Muhammad was the uh, last prophet or why uh, there we aren't tested the same way. I, and I can understand you saying like either way, we're still getting tested. But I, I'm just curious why we wouldn't see uh you know, why miracles wouldn't uh, work in the same way today. No, every, everyone is getting a different test even today. Mm -hmm. Because it depends where you're born. It depends what your physical capacities are. It depends uh, someone is born in a completely different state than you are. Someone is born today in a country in which there's been bombed. Someone is born... Even today, the tests are different. Allah, Azzawajal, based on his wisdom, he gives the test. It's as simple as that. Because Allah, Azzawajal, says in the Quran, that we do not overburden a soul except what it can handle. So Allah will give you a soul, uh, a sorry, Allah will give you a test that you can handle depending on your situation. Mm. And that's it. So I, we say that Allah Azza wa does what he wills. La yus'alu mm. He's not asked upon what he does. We are the ones who are asked because we are the creation. So if, in essence, you're asking me, why does the all wise, you, the limited knowledge and wise person, why does the all wise choose to do things in a specific way? I don't think I can mm. give you an answer for that, right? But Allah Azza sent different prophets and messengers. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah determined to preserve his message. So there is no need to send other messengers because the message is preserved in the Quran. It's here today and will always be preserved until the day of judgment. There's no need for another messenger when the message is here. The question is you, Ethan, other than worrying about other people, shouldn't you be worrying about yourself, right? Where are you going to end up yet? Yeah? 
So that's the, yeah. I think that's the, that's the important thing to worry about, right? Ourselves, because we can worry about other people, but what about ourselves? Where are we ending up when we die? <laughs> is that a that I hope that's a rhetorical question. I, I no, it's an actual know. question. You know? Oh, yeah. Is uh, I mean, as an atheist uh, or ag- agnostic, however you want to put, it, I I assume we just go to nothing, right? Again, uh, keyword you said it. Assume if there is evidence, as I was just saying, that the Quran is from God, or as I said, the, the idea, even the idea of the existence of God is anything to begin with. But the evidences of Islam being the truth are there, are clear once you study and research. Then that assumption is false. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and uh, so once again, if I, I, I am, uh, I'll be completely honest here. I am doubtful that the evidence is uh, e- extremely good, I, but I'm not going to, I, I'm 100% not going to cast it off because of my current assumption. I, I will look into it. And you're right with people saying, if someone says to me, uh, like, especially when, how many how many Muslims are there in the world at this point? Around what's two the, billion. What's the, yeah, it, especially when there's two billion people believing it, right? I, I figure it gives at least enough merit uh, off of that alone to uh, look into it, right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. So that's my advice: but, look into mm-hmm. Islam, look at the, into the evidences for Islam being the truth. Uh, I, we've been talking for a while now. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I would yeah, yeah. go because there are a lot of people in the backstage. I would start even engaging more in this topic but uh we can come again if you like to come again if you've got any other questions we can deal with the other topic if you can deal, deal with the topic of the evidences if you like as well uh there's a lot of people waiting in the backstage so i've got yeah. i gotta give them a chance as well yeah yeah thank you so much hopefully if we talk next time it'll be a lot more about historicity and i'll uh i'll have a lot more knowledge there and uh a lot more like defined questions for that absolutely so no you. problem yeah not just historicity but whatever claim that muslims put forward to show that okay this person has to be from the creator. Like, for mm. example, the number of prophecies that Prophet Muhammad Islam's made about the future. Okay? Uh, that The numerous ones that he made, all of them happening, none of them are false. The idea of the Quran talking about natural world, naturalistic phenomena, the life of Prophet Muhammad Islam himself, how he lived it psychologically. Can you give an alternative explanation that he wasn't a prophet of God? That is something you need to come to think about and come up with next time. So it's just giving mm. you basic things for research, you know, <laughs> next time. Yeah, yeah. And then we can have a discussion, another discussion, inshallah, yeah? So yeah. I'll let you go. Thank- Ethan? Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you. No problem. Yeah, bye. bye.